I move the closing speeches and call on Patrick Harvey. Up to six minutes less would be more, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. It's often my way to scatter a generous mix of praise and criticism on both sides of the chamber, so here goes. Mr Swinney was quite right to be a wee bit tentative in his acknowledgement of signs of economic progress. I think he used the phrase stable, if not uniform, progress. But he then immediately started defining progress in terms of GDP growth only. In discussing employment, he focused on overall numbers, not the nature of employment or issues such as low pay. In talking about the strength of the economy, he saw it purely in output terms. Now, the problems that Greens see with this economic mindset, it, it, it relates to what I would call the outgoing economic model. They, these problems cannot all be laid fairly solely at Mr Swinney's door. And we find little to disagree with in, in most of his motion, and I, I suspect he's interested in a, a, at least sympathetic to some of our arguments in these issues. But he continues to define economic success in the terms laid down by the economic model which has already failed us. Like most other political parties, recovery to him seems to mean getting back to business as usual. So while we do have much in common, we part company as soon as the debate becomes that sterile contest as to which government can more convincingly claim the credit uh, for the most recent GDP figures. As for the, the Labour Party's contribution, Mr Gray recognised certain aspects of the employment picture which do need to be acknowledged. Underemployment, low pay, zero hours contracts, insecure conditions and people facing rising living costs at the same time. He made the case, and I agree, that a devolved government's hands are not fully tied in these matters. Public contracts are an example that he gave. I agree, and I'll be supporting amendments to the procurement bill in this regard. And I would also agree that instead of a simplistic, untargeted small business bonus, we could design a business rates scheme which genuinely incentivizes ethical uh, practices in business, investment in quality new jobs and local sustainable resilient economies. The same case could be made in relation to those corporate welfare payments, the government grants which are too often paid, as my colleague Alison Johnson uh, noted, uh, to the likes of Amazon instead of indigenous small businesses. So while we have common ground as well with Mr Gray in many of these areas, the rest of his remarks, the rest of his remarks were limited to a simplistic attack on independence. That's a case he's perfectly entitled to make and I've no doubt that he does it with sincerity. But I was hoping, I was hoping for some unpacking of the, the comments in his amendment about new powers to achieve some of the things that we want to achieve. Uh, I, I was hoping that we'd hear more of that after yesterday's debate. I'm personally not open to the jam tomorrow argument, but I think many people want to know. Malcolm Chisholm clearly wants to know, as, as in yesterday's debate uh, when he talked uh, about the economic advantages that would come from more fiscal devolution, even if it's just all income tax staying in Scotland. So there's clearly an appetite for more, even on the Labour benches, but we heard nothing of that today. As for the uh, Tory and Lib Dem contributions, uh, those speeches focused on that shallow argument, is it the UK or Scottish Government which can claim the credit for the least impressive recovery from a recession in living memory? Now, they, they would like Mr Osborne to be hailed for this great achievement, uh, and all the while he is planning to raid billions more from the pockets of society's poorest people. The agenda of the UK Government is clear. Austerity to them is not a necessary evil, it's the new normal, an ever smaller public sector, an ever more denuded welfare state. Well, those who believe in that agenda should be honest about it, and those who claim to oppose it should give up the ministerial cars and join with those who seek to bring down that government as soon as possible. What was missing from the other party's contribution is provided by the Green Amendment and was articulated by Alison Johnson. A new, sustainable and democratically accountable economic model where we challenge the myopic obsession with GDP at any cost. Where we invest in the public services which we all depend upon. 
where we protect small businesses and local economies from the domination of vast multinationals, whether in banking, retail, energy, or any other sector. Deputy Presiding Officer, in closing, I want to mention Willie Rennie, because Willie Rennie asked me to accept that there's a whole new level of uncertainty that comes with independence. Now, few people in this chamber might be open to persuasion on either side of this, but I would make the case that it's a whole new level of possibility which independence creates. Not the guarantee, not the guarantee of this more radical agenda that I'm suggesting, but merely the possibility. And I contrast that with a whole new level of certainty and a status quo that it's time to reject. That's what the opposition to the independence movement represents. Thank you.